with the documented objects model based cross site scripting, the vulnerability is in JavaScript running inside the browser. Other than delivering the JavaScript to the browser, the application server is not involved in the actual cross site script. The user clicks on some type of a phishing link, and the input from that link is passed to the vulnerable JavaScript running in the browser. The cross site script occurs immediately. This doesn't involve any kind of round trips to the server or any kind of storage from the database. So this is different than reflected cross-site script or stored cross-site script. We can take a look at an example in Matilda Day. If we go to one of the cross-site scripting pages, the HTML5 web storage page, we see a bunch of HTML5 storage items displayed on the screen, and we can add more. When we try to add a message into the web storage. This is processed by a JavaScript running on the page. So we click on add new and we get a new key value pair. We see the key of hello and the value of world that we had typed in below. We take a look at the vulnerability on the page through inspect element. We'll be able to pull up the JavaScript or we can also do view source and see the JavaScript that way. So either way works. If you want to do view source and you're in Firefox, you can do control U. Otherwise, right click on the page and select view source. We go down to the JavaScript function that has the word message in it we'll see the set message vulnerability in action. So right here, inside of this function, there's a call to the set message. And if we scroll up, we'll see the actual function itself. One of the things that we notice is that when the variable p message is put into the span on the page, it's done so using a vulnerable method, innerHTML. InnerHTML does not do output encoding, making it vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Inner text should have been used instead. Going back over to our page, we know that the field is vulnerable and it's displayed right here at the bottom once the set message puts the value of the key into that position. So this is where we can put our script in. We can use a self-firing script. For example, we can use image source equals X and then do an on air equals and then some kind of a JavaScript payload and then end the image. We add this to the page. Because it's a self-firing script, it doesn't need us to hover or click in over anything. It just fires right away. The key difference between the DOM-based cross-site script and the other types is that the vulnerable code that's failing to do the output encoding is actually the JavaScript running in the browser itself. It's not the server-side code like we see in reflected or stored cross-site scripts. 